For the last two years, there's been one group who have been threatening on our home turf at Buckmore Park. These rookie drivers have been trying to take the crown during the 24 hour karting race. And they go by the name Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. Come on, the frogs! I've been racing on Bagmore Park for over 16 years and is now our home for karting videos. So I've assembled the best of the best, not to win the race, but to simply beat Senior Frogs. The team will be doing over 1,600 laps. Brutal weather conditions, unexpected twists, and pressure reaching boiling point. This is our Buckmore Park, and this is our side of the story. This would be our quadrant headquarters for the next 24 hours. Here we could watch our entire race, keep in constant communication through our radio system to the driver, and keep us relaxed in between our stints. However, the production team had one big surprise for us waiting in the car park. Unbelievable. In our tour bus, we had the full VIP experience. 16 beds with air conditioning. Archie, me and you later here. <laughs> what? Working kitchen, multiple lounge areas, and complimentary drinks. They even had a gaming setup. A PlayStation 4 doesn't work. Get it gone. Sounds like beach. No idea And just like that, we were ready to take on Senor Frogs. Okay, just initially, I know this looks bad, right? I realize, okay, this is probably not a good look. The rivalry wasn't real, but now that we're here, Quadrant, as always, are still in my heart. I think, you know, just be, you know, we're, we're all friends off the track. Why can't we be friends on it? Judas Iscariot, uh, also known as Wilney. Uh, he's uh, in the team, so I'd uh, obviously like to see him do uh, quite poorly. There is some tension. I can feel it. Every time I walk past and I look Max in his beautiful eyes, I think, damn, you're a good looking guy, but I'm going to have to crush your soul. Also, if you give him the context, we've had about seven or eight members in past years. This year, we have five. Ethan Bazinga has nearly been finished off by his own lungs. Oh. Alex has been banned. And Carl Friese is so slow, uh, we've taken him out of the cart. After our briefing with all of the drivers, we were ready to go into qualifying. But there was just one issue that we haven't addressed yet. The rules state we have to have the car at 70 kg, minimum. Rhea does not hit that threshold. She needs to have a seat that's like 20 kgs heavier. So Matt behind the camera has been like strapping lead and asbestos, all sorts of chemicals. Here's your seat. Oh my God. Of course, how could I forget about the chair? That thing is rigged with like 20 kilos of lead. Whether that turns into an advantage, lower center of gravity. I'm really hoping that she still has that nimbleness. She's gonna be starting the race. Uh, the reason for that, one, we don't have to load in the seats straight away. At the very beginning of the race, everyone is more bunched up together and that's where mistakes happen. If she spins, then that's us kind of done. So if she's at the back of the pack and just is consistent, then she have, we haven't lost that much time yeah. at all. We wanted to give Rhea as much time as possible to get used to the added weight in the car. And just like we'd planned, we were starting from last place. Yeah, so it's your typical endurance racing maneuver, essentially. What you want to have is your bronzes in first. We're getting all the rookies out of the way, basically, and then we're going to come back for a late title charge. We knew at 5.30 that Buckmore Park would face a huge thunderstorm. So by having our rookie drivers go out first whilst it was still dry, it meant that as soon as the rain started to fall and the sun started to set, we could start to climb back up the order with our pro drivers. Our cart's fuel tank could only last two hours. Then we needed to pit to refuel and swap drivers. But as it was Rhea and Niran's first time doing an endurance race like this, they would only be able to manage 30 minutes. We had a big challenge ahead of us, and now it was time to line up on the grid. So you can essentially just call this a dress rehearsal for the mob, essentially. For exactly. myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's my practice. practice. We're lacking in the engine department, lacking a couple of horses, but 
you know what? We make it up with talent. The main topic is that it's going to rain a lot. It wouldn't be a Bookmore 24 without rain, would it? I'm looking forward to the rain because it's probably stronger in the rain than the dry. Send your frogs, sneak a win against them. Even if we're 29th and they're 30th, yeah. that'll do. Luck is in the air, ready to go. Down it goes and away we go for the Bookmore Park 24 hours and it's a good start. Yeah, she's going in. in! Rhea had a clean start and was already gaining positions when suddenly... Oh, there's a, there's, someone's in a wall. There's right? a kerfuffle down We've there. Made so we made a play. <laughs> Chris MD had spun his car. We were now leading ahead of Senor Frogs. Rhea had moved up two positions in the first few laps. Chris went out first in. He spun on the first lap, which was not good. You know what? We should work together, guys. That's what I was yeah, saying. Right right but the added weight to our cart began to affect its handling. That cart now is going to be out there for 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all a cruel ruse that we're lulling these uh, frogmen into a false sense of security. They think they're home and hose. They're fucking wrong and they're dirty. Am I ready? No. Listen, we're not last at the moment. Basically, and if we and my stint not last, that is a win. Oh, oh, you know what? As well, because you're so tall, that's just bad for the arrow. Quadrant. <laughs> yeah, near out there. I mean, what can you expect, really? That that's that screams last place. He's gonna do it. Come on, come on. he's gonna come on. race lead. P1. On. Let's fucking have it. I'm excited, man. It should be good. I'm, I'm hoping. Obviously, two hours is the, is the like the objective. As little spinning as possible. That's the aim. I personally, uh, knowing my own skill set and the skill set of some of the others, feel like that might be a slightly optimistic um, aim. With Rhea now coming into pit, as quickly as we could, we replaced her seat as Niran made his way onto the track. It was fun. Like, I feel like I did good at the beginning. Then I think I got a little bit slower. There's certain, like, at a hairpin, I always seem to lose time. Our enemies bumped into me once, so I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Following Rhea's impressive start, it was down to Niran to keep up the pace. One hour has passed. We are lost. <laughs> Five laps down. No major mistakes to speak of, so like, yeah. yeah, it's not doing too bad. The main mistake is obviously the trim. I was having to do a lot of changes early on. It's hurt our race, but now we're going to try and make it up. So there's still, still potential for Quadrant to come back into this. They're going to have to dig deep. Steve, what do you think I can do here? I think if we remain within 10 laps, the lead. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic start. I'm liking the fact it's dry right now. Okay. Even a little bit sunny, which is a bit raucous to say in England. Steve looked at these forecasts just, uh, just a moment ago and uh, it was literally the heavens opening, an hour into our race. I think we're all entirely concerned about the weather forecast, I think. We were hoping for a nice and easy dry race. Not looking like we're getting that. With the rain fast approaching and Quadrant back in last place, it was time to send out Arab to make the most of the dry track whilst we still had it. We are seven laps down on the overall lead. We've got 22 and a half hours left, so there's plenty of time for us to uh, pull that back. Putting in some decent lap times, it was crucial that Arab remained consistent in order to close the nine place gap between us and the Frogs. I think the one advantage Frogs have over Quadrant is yes, Quadrant have fast drivers, but I don't know if they've raced up Buckmore lots. It's due to rain for a lot of this race. So we have rain away and anti-fog. So this will repel water off of the visor so it doesn't stick on your visor so you have good visibility and this will stop it fogging up. We're about to install our secret weapon, okay? Giga GT. Steve's gonna come in and he's gonna get us our 11 laps back. Get a nice slow-mo of that. You got this, go on, Raidmaster. <laughs> I think when it's wet and we can only use slick tyres, that's going to help massively for the guys with experience. He's going to be an absolute demon in the wet right now, is Steve. We all know it. There's, yeah. You know, I could blow as much smoke up his backside as he needs to, but there's no point. He just, we all know he's going to be fast. I just hope Steve can pull a miracle off. With Arrow finishing his stint disheartened, it was all down to Steve to pick up the pieces from the rookies, starting from last place. Quadrant are really flying now, you know, up into 29th place. Yay! Yay! There's a little bit of argy bargy. Steve says, I've one of them. Working the oh, wheel. Look yeah, at look that. at that. That wasn't track limits, that was talent. Oh, oh here we go. Here. I've got the inside. Yeah. 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 As that is uh, Super GT up the inside. So he looks to press on. The secret weapon. 
it's in full effect. This was the plan all along. Guys. Oh, that be tasty. Oh, that Sorry. <laughs> that, that switch back. That Through was tasty, game. that one. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> there you go, Super GT. Every, every time we look at Steve, he's overtaking. Yeah, someone. he is. Mm. He's seven seconds a lap quicker. That is poetry in motion. Not the position gained. This man is actually not of this earth. I mean, look at that. Yeah. How did that turn into an overtaking maneuver? Because Super GT. Yeah. Yeah. Another play. Steve is doing bits. Got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got it. He's got it. Let's go. Another manoeuvre. <laughs> Steve is carving up the field. I think we're actually fast as some track as well. Talking. This is our comeback time. Ready, nice. oh! oh! That was George Russell. It's cool, isn't it, actually? Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> oh, hell no, man. <laughs> How many, how many times have you planning to spin, bro? <laughs> no, it's no spin, bro. It's to catch him. Isn't it? Oh. I'm absolutely bricking it, actually. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I've felt this amount of pressure since uh, probably the 2015 car in World Championships. Classic British weather. Living the dream. Well, you know, as a racing driver, you've got your up and down days in the wet. I've been known to be sort of Ayrton, Ayrton Senna-esque and uh, also absolutely horrendous. Now, with Steve coming in after a stint for the history books, we were now P25. It was up to Clem to continue the much needed momentum to try and catch Senor Frogs, who are currently P12. The number 30 now gets back out onto track. Quadrant uh, looking to make up lost ground at the moment. They're currently running 25th overall. Yeah, fantastic in there from uh, Super UG, Mr. Steve Brown. Ooh, I'm knackered. My wrists are done. But that was really fun. Honestly, I love that. What a man! He's him! He's him! You're like five, six seconds quicker than most people. Everybody else. Imagine being that good, man. I don't look my best right now. It doesn't matter. He's cooked so hard. It doesn't matter. With Clem taking a stint into the night and the rain continuing to fall, the chances of us catching Senor Frogs was looking more and more difficult. Yeah, I think Senor Frogs have really surprised me. I think they've done a fantastic job. Clearly, the practice they've done has paid off. As a team, Senor Frogs, we have done a lot of practice, right? We are not good partners, but we know this place, right? Buckmore, we are certainly Buckmore merchants. Even watching them out there as someone who's grown up racing, like what they're doing is quite impressive considering the lack of experience. I've got less than no interest in not beating that team. If they're not beaten hour 23, I'm implementing some sabotage. All I know is that they're the enemy and they must be destroyed. Oh, oh, Flemington's back! Flemington's back, everyone. That was fucking slow, wasn't it? It was literally, it was torrential at the end there, like. All right, buddy. I love you, but the pace is dog, mate. <laughs> <laughs> After some encouraging words from the team, James was making up some good time and holding on nicely to P25. Senor Frogs had dropped to P13, giving us a chance to catch them. As per usual quadrant fashion, the weather just kept getting worse. It is literally a river on the main straight. Look literally at the spray boats. from Slicks. Make sure he keeps it on track and we'll be fine. I've got to get out there and produce some magic. I thrive in the moist. <laughs> you dirty boy. I and Steve are off to the RV to have a little kit. Steve's got an earlier 3 a.m. stint. I've got a 5 a.m. stint. Back out in the car for two hours or maybe more. Oh, and now we're losing power apparently. <laughs> Things are kicking off, but I'm off for bed. This is an amazing surprise. Oh, oh, lovely. Oh, it's perfect for my height. Literally perfect. I'm going to sleep just like this. Coughing for how I'm feeling. <laughs> While Arav and Steve were getting some beauty sleep and James' stint was coming to an end, it was now our resident racing driver Max's turn to show us how it's done. But not before some late night drama. Senor Frogs, black flag. They've been in the pit lane for 30 seconds. I think Chip passed someone over like under yellow flag conditions or something. He's gone out, got in a battle and then been taken out. Engines cut out and I think they've lost like two laps. We are now like less than, I know this is going to sound crazy, less than 10 laps behind them. But with Steve having two more stints, bro, this is possible. I'm excited about my stint because I only did one lap in practice and then I got told to slow down because we didn't want to get bumped up to the pro category. 
I think Max is going to be good in the wet. He's um, carrying a little bit more body weight than he used to in the Zero Formula days, and that transfers into speed in the rain, because you can move that weight around, get it over the different tyres at certain times. I want grip there, I want grip there, I want grip there. You can move that weight around. So I think Max will be um, coming into his own there with that sort of retirement stuff. It's going to be a cool experience. It's the first time competitively racing since 2020 for me, so I'm just going to enjoy the whole experience. Face felt good. Hand it over to Max. Let's see how we can go. Max had managed to gain us a couple of positions, and we were now just nine positions behind Senor Frogs. Everything was going well. Too well. It's not looking good. Guys, we've got a black flag. A black flag right now, that's not what we need. After a little hiccup from Max and a valuable lesson learned, we headed back out onto the track to try and claw back the lost time. We're now on the first page of the standings, everybody. We've made the first page. Come on. Let's go. Everyone's gone crazy here. It's amazing. Oh, for fuck's sake, we've just got another black flag. <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's sake. Black flags. They have been a bit of an issue. OK, Max, we're going to have to box for another black flag. We're going to have to box for another black flag. I think Max had two in his stint. That's like one per hour, so <laughs> quite a lot. He didn't slow down enough in yellow flags. Typical racer who goes to a kart race, he put his hand up and thought, oh, that's enough. When he came in, apparently, he went too quick and got another black flag for basically not doing that black flag correctly. After more penalties than a World Cup final, it was time for the man from down under to put his sim racing experience to good use. Quadrant will make their pit stop. That is a walk of someone whose legs are hurting a little bit. Good job. Oh, wait, never mind. Not good job. He got penalties. Bad job, Max. Probably the toughest conditions I've ever raced in. To be fair, normally what I used to do, they wouldn't even let you drive out in that car. Oh, bro, I had my contacts in the whole time. Yeah. With the visor open. We're so tired now. <laughs> I actually destroyed. During the race, every team needs to conduct a mandatory 10-minute service stop. This allows the staff of Buckmore to conduct an oil check, apply fresh tyres, and conduct general maintenance to the cart. Back to the racing, and with the new service car out on track, Ben was doing his best in the dark and wet conditions. All right, so 3 a.m., just woken up from a lovely three-hour sleep, something like that. Now I'm going to go out for three hours of getting soaked. Don't you just love it? Do the frog scrub. Have a go on, mate. OK, Mr. Will and E has just gone out. I'll be sure to punt him off many times when I join him out on track in a minute. While we're doing today's race, I just want to thank our sponsor, the Razer Kishi Ultra. This is Razer's latest USB-C gaming controller for Android, iPhone and iPad mini. Simply connect your device into the controller and it will give you full access as if you were playing on a console controller. Featuring analog sticks, triggers, D-pad and more means you can game wherever you want. Discover thousands of compatible games via the Razus Nexus app, like Call of Duty Mobile, Grid Autosport and Wreckfest. So whether you're on a long haul flight or even waiting for your next stint out on track, upgrade your mobile gaming experience with the Razer Kishi Ultra. Click the link in the description to find out more. Now let's get back to Ben's stint in the rain. With Quadrant staying firmly in P22, it was time for us to reintroduce our not-so-secret weapon. But Steven made a name for himself around the track, and the press wanted a slice. We got a few important questions, so I thought I'd get through some of them. Custard creams or bourbons? Who would win in a fight? A silverback gorilla or Conor McGregor? I can hear again. <laughs> are we yeah. getting on? We are. Steve's cooking. He's, Mate, uh, he's Steve, been, Steve is a problem. Consistent 105s. Mate, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, he's like a good second quicker than anybody else. Well, Moss, how are we Hello. doing? Hello, mate. How are you? It's beating me. How are we doing? Where are we? So, we are oh, nice. in 25th now. No, 21. 21. 21. Slap. Oh, the shit. Next oh, top Steve. position. Steve but is crap. Consistent 105s. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's yeah. a joke. Driving early into the morning, Quadrant were now P21. However, the fatigue was really starting to set in for Steve. And after a grueling two and a half hour stint, it was time to hand the reins back to Arav. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Good, mate. I need to sit down. I don't know if I can do anymore. 
With Steve unsure if he would be able to do another stint and the frogs still six positions ahead of us in P15, the idea of beating them seemed to be drifting further and further away. Oh my God. Every bit of me hurt. Every bit. My wrists were in agony after about 20 minutes and I could barely grip the wheel, but then I had still two hours left in the stint. As soon as I climbed out of the car, I was absolutely destroyed. And I'm kind of glad that I don't have to go out again. I, at first, I thought I did something wrong. I noticed our camera broke. It was basically dangling. And they gave us a black flag just because it was dangerous. I had to come into the pits, they had to take it off, and then get going. I mean, what can you do? It's, it's just rotten luck with the camera falling off. No one's fault. With our original strategy out the window, it was time to adopt a new game plan. From rivals to friends. A friendship has blossomed between Quadrant and Senor Frogs. We've kind of resigned to the fact that we're probably not going to be Senor Frogs now. They've driven really well. The Senor Frogs look like they could be on for a podium in their final ever race, whereas Quadrant, not quite on for that. We've kind of changed our, uh, our stance. We're going to help them out a little bit. Our team radio wasn't working. Quadrant came to the rescue. Our RV, the place that we were meant to sleep, had no beds in it. Quadrant came to the rescue again with a double-decker bus. It's torrential rain out there, we could barely see. But Quadrant to the rescue again as they came in with this little visor spray to stop it fogging up. If we do achieve this podium, it's likely that we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Clearly put the practice in, the preparation, their pace and consistency has been very good. Certainly less penalties than us. All we're gonna do now, you know, give them our support. James going out now, six hours left. Let's bring it home. With Steve confirming he would not be able to do another stint, James decided to take his place. Everything was going well, and we even hit a big milestone. Lap a thousand! Yeah! Well, 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 Let's go! Come on. <laughs> a thousand laps. All seemed hopeful, and all things were going smoothly. Until... Something just snapped in my wrist. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, oh, it's it's just that he went in and then just like bench bar and just gets out. With James coming in with no prior warning due to injury, we currently had nobody on the track, leaving the team having to quickly scramble Clem back out for a surprise stint. That was a rough stint, man. Had a little bit of pace, but a uh, old recurring injury reared its ugly head. In 2016, in my actual glory days, I had a massive stack in Las Vegas. I uh, went under a wall at about 92 mile an hour. Broke my neck, dislocated shoulders, blown out wrists, both wrists actually. Did a knee, got a third degree burn on my leg as well. I woke up and my leg was sitting on the exhaust pipe. I never thought it would uh, bite me on the ass eight years later, but here we are. Having admitted defeat, there was now only one hope for the YouTube community. Clem's out there now, the second to last stint. He's opted for no radio, so we're just coming out here to check how he's doing. Come on! As Clem was put in in his last few laps, it was time for Max to prepare for his final stint of the race. Then your frogs have gone from our rivals to people we're trying to support and we want them to win now and see it off after this long 24 hours. Uh, the quadrant driver, cart number 30 against Senor Frogs. This is the battle that every, everybody's wanted to see for a long, long time and they are right together on the circuit now. But well, then when I caught up to Chip, I couldn't help but give him a good fight. Give him a few nudges here and there. Heads down the inside, floats sideways into him and has one of them. Any hand gestures? Oh, well, yes, it's one to say sorry and a thumbs up from Chip. <laughs> That's really good sportsmanship. That was lovely to see, wasn't it? But then I also showed him a different racing line to help him out. There was just so much grip on the outside where you keep it flat. So when he was behind me, I just pointed to follow me. Three hours left. Ben has unfortunately missed his slot. Because Max was meant to finish the race. I think he's still sleeping. So we're now on the way to the RV to try and wake him up. Miss your bed. Hello. Hello, mate. Oh, morning, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, buddy. Yeah, you yeah. Good, mate. So, the sit rep is, um, you overslept a little bit, missed your slot. Oh, shit. All right, I'll be up in a little bit. It's been about 15 minutes since we came in. And we have no, I think he's fallen back asleep. 
Hello. Hola. <laughs> we do actually need to get Ben in the cart now. I think we're going to run out of fuel in a second. So Max is going to hop out and Ben is going to take us home. Let's go. And with a good night's sleep under his belt, Ben was ready to conclude our Buckmore journey. And the quadrant team heading back out on the circuit right now. Cart number 30 makes its way back around. Well, the rookies going down to the wire. The last hour about to start now. The end was in sight for our racers and Quadrant was holding P8 in the rookie league. But Senor Frogs, now in P2, had everything to play for. I've run the numbers, taken a look at them. <clears throat> I've said, yo, I don't understand these. We've got 10 laps to gain on the team above us. I will only give up on that dream when there's nine laps left. Come on up the quadrant, let's fucking have it. As the day was coming to a close and the team were looking a bit delirious. <laughs> it was looking as if senior frogs would have to settle with P2. Our journey at the 24 hour Buckmore race didn't quite go to plan, but our time here wasn't wasted. Oh my God. <laughs> he did it done. Sorry about that, Ben. You've been black flagged for driving. <laughs> 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 he was like, what? <laughs> 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 so don't bother. Joking, box. joking, we're joking. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours, it is nameless that will round Cafe Curve and take the race win for the Buckmore Park. 24 hours. There were lessons learned, friendships formed, and a broken wrist, but we're Quadrant, that's what we do. And next year, we will be back stronger than ever. We started last, we did not finish last. Thanks again to Razor for sponsoring this video. Ciao, and we'll see you on the next one. Woo!